Akpudak, I mentioned the world champion, down from 82 kilos to 77. But we talk about that first match of the day being so difficult, because if you remember rightly, Akpudak, at the beginning of the day, didn't look like his usual self. He didn't look like he could get going. He was a little bit slow on the legs after that first three minutes. Two matches after that, completely different story. And then you're back to the 82 kilo world champion, Agbadak. And that's the interesting part about this competition is you don't have to weigh in twice. So after that initial weigh in, it may take you two, three, four, five hours to get back up to your normal weight. But there is no cutting weight after this. No, you can eat what you want after this. <laughs> That's always a good feeling when the competition day is done and you can hit the buffet. What a life. Gutu made his way to the finals with an opening round win against Poland Bednars. Following that up, Tiolubayev, the neutral athlete. And now we see him taking on Burhan Akbudak. So two wins and two matches for Gutu, who is the top seeded athlete at this weight coming into the European Olympic qualifiers, and on the other end, Akbudak picked up three victories. Azebrecia out of Italy in the first round, followed by Varga of Czech Republic in round two, and Kasimajevic of Croatia in round three. Should also mention, after seeing Victor Ciobanu earn the berth for Moldova at 60 kilos, if Alexander Gutu is able to pick up a qualification spot here. This would be the first time ever in Moldova history that two guys from Greco-Roman have made it to the Olympic Games. They've never had that. We talked about Chiabanu never erasing that deficit of never having a Moldovan athlete reach the Olympic Games on two occasions. So history for Moldova potentially twice tonight. Nice goal wrench there. An aqueduct. That gut, he's catching that arm. Like the first time he's caught, he's going to cinch it in again. Now he needs to, yeah, walk towards that arm. Then he gets a little bit closer and he can tie it up. How smart was that to come back to the left side so he didn't run out of real estate? Yeah, very smart. Gutu's reversed it now, put him on his back. You've mentioned it a few times today. Having the composure to slow, slow down in down. those moments. And it did look like the right arm of Burhan Akbudak came up to the left leg. Yeah, kind of blocked that foot from stepping in, yeah. It's actually yeah. both. Both. At that point, you'd rather give up the two, then go four. Yeah, yeah and then go flying on yeah, off the mat, exactly. Well, there we go, seven, four it should be on the clock now. More importantly though, because the leg foul came, they're gonna put Burhan Akbudak in the down position, in so Gutu there. will have his chance. And it's important because he will also have the opportunity in period number two because Burhan Akbudak. Yeah. So this could change the complexion of the match. Gutu down four, seven to four, but he's on top looking to score and equal this match up. 52 seconds left in period number one. World champion finding himself yeah, in some for trouble the right here. Been challenged again. It's going to be rare that they give two leg fouls. I think this one 
is a challenge you don't have to give. No, I don't think so. It's a big risk. But who knows? It looks oh. like it on the video. It does look like it, so it'll be 7-6. In addition to that, Aqueduct will continue to go down. To go down on the ground. Now what that does, say Gutu doesn't challenge, and he goes into second period, gets the one for the passivity, then he only needs a turn, which we saw he's able to get. Then it's tied 7-7, seven, seven, and you're in a lot different position. Now he needs multiple scores. Nice positional awareness from Gutu. Even though he was on his way down, he realized Agbadak was on his way backwards and his foot was already in the orange, so he just knew all he had to do was just give him a little bit of a push, a little bit of a drive, and he could take the point. Fifteen seconds left in the opening frame. First period ends with Akbudak leading Alexander Ngutu eight to five. High scoring first period, I would have yeah, never expected. Re really high scoring. Always in these semi-final matches, you don't really expect it to be too high scoring. But right now. Gutu really needs to go out now and put the pressure on. Again, for that 30, 40 seconds to try and get the passivity. To get it down to 8-6, a roll, 8-8. Eight, eight. Gotta love that. Sticking his hands out in protest as if to say, look, he's not got an arm, he's only on my neck. Nothing's gonna come from this. You're gonna call it all what? Wasting time on the clock, and I need that clock to be my friend. Nice, again, positional awareness. He knows he's on the back foot. He knows, okay, if I drive forward now, he's, all, he's only in a headlock position. It's, I'm low seven to go. He can't throw me. He has to step out. And now Blue's going to get hit for passive. So 8-7 will be the score. A turn here for Alexander, Alexander Gutun. Puts him in the lead over world champion Burhan Akbudak. Two minutes and eight seconds left. Gutu just taking his time here, trying to get under. No, not rushing. He knows once he's got the lock, he can start to work. Needs to run him off the mat, try and... What a job by Akudak. Yeah, just managed to keep his weight hanging down, which puts immense stress on the grip of Gutu there. And as, as you saw, he had to let go at the end. This is what I like to see. 145 left, one point match, Olympic spot on the line. Doesn't get any better than this. Exactly no. what we saw with Seal the last match. Yeah. These guys are really putting on a show. Yeah. 
Cenk Ildum in the corner from Turkey, yelling at the referee, Burhan Akbudak, throwing his hands out, and Gutu on the other side doing the same thing. I think both are just clashing heads a little in this position. They're gonna stop and they're gonna... They're yeah. gonna go caution in two, but white paddled. I think both both are as bad as each other in this situation. You can't penalize one when the other's doing the exact same thing. If the blatant headbutts, okay, give the two, give the warning. But if both are just going for it, then you can't really. 8-7. Eight, 8-8 eight, eight now. Excuse me, 8-8. Eight, 8-8. Eight. Eight, eight. But Abudok with those highest highest scoring moves is in front still. Gutu needs at least at least another point. And you see that underline under Akbudok's eight, which means he holds criteria. So if the match were to end 8-8, eight, eight, Akbudok would be declared the winner. 37 seconds left, period number two. Gutu back to that left side underhook. That was working for him. He should go back to it a little. But Gucci looking very frustrated now, very tired. Needs something special now. And Akudak picks up a takedown to gain the outright 10-8 lead, more importantly, with Enes Basar at 60 kilos, Burhan Akudak will see you at the Paris Olympic Games.